having been there for three years, it seems just so obvious. You know, when I think about the question, because you know, everything that's happened that makes the vision come alive, that makes it more than words on a page, you know, is because of Pearl Lane and Carrie Reynolds. You know, because that's where that's where hearts meet hearts and lives meet lives. You know, it's not it's it's not about principles, but, but people. And, it's, it's the thing that captures you and keeps going and, and lets you know that this is what God is. It, because it, you come to a place where you start searching for words to try to describe you know, just what it is and what it means, but you start seeing, you start seeing people encounter other people, you know, you see, see Mary falling in love with specific people that she's willing to rearrange her whole schedule, not because she's a good Christian or not because the love of Christ compels her, even though all that stuff's true. Right. She just wants she wants to be with them, and then in being with them, they, they don't challenge your life. They simply ask questions about the life they know, and that just puts your life, you know, shines a spotlight on... Why doesn't she know her neighbors? And why, when she lives in this neighborhood with all these nice houses and these big trees, are they alone? Whereas, you know, you go to Pearl Lane and you see all those duplexes stacked one behind each other and it's all exposed red clay and concrete, and yet they know everything about everything that's going on and they're shocked that you don't know the name of your next door neighbor, you know? And, or, um, Or you see the place where the spirit flows, you know, that, that one of those first stories and one of my favorite stories I tell all the time is, you know, when, when Fisher wanted the vacuum cleaner and told my wife, oh, Miss Rekamp needs a vacuum cleaner, right? And only to find out that you know, that's exactly what she wanted, contrary to what anyone realized. But the reason why she wanted it was because, you know, she was dying. She knew all the big questions were answered, but she felt forgotten in her suffering. And, you know, made that deal with God, show me that you love me, give me a vacuum cleaner for Christmas. And the avenue for that, for God speaking at, you know, was my three-year-old son. It wasn't me, it wasn't the elders, it wasn't my wife. And you just get a sense of the bigness of God and the intricacy of God. And, you have hope as a parent for your child, you know? And, but none of that happens. None of it happens. If there isn't a pearl lane, if there isn't a canvas that God wants to paint you a picture of, right? If we're not there helping take care of a garden that she can't take care of anymore because of her cancer, you know, and, and my wife hasn't taken our kids there because she wants to teach them what it means to really love someone and to serve them. None of this happens. Right? We keep drifting on in what we're doing. We're wondering so many of the big questions about you know, will my sons know God? Will they walk with God? You know, will they have merciful hearts? Will they, will they be obedient? Um, you know, will our lives amount to anything? Will we make a difference in someone knowing there's a God in heaven and how they live their lives? Will we ease anyone's burdens? You know, or will we just be fat and happy and retire? And, but all of that happens in like a sacred space. And God's given us that space. And it's nothing less than the place where we meet Jesus. And Jesus meets us. And so, you know, we say it all the time. We need, we need the people there much more than they need us. They're, you know, we desperately need to know. We've forgotten things that they know. You know, if, if we can share some of the things that we have, you know, some of the, the ways the system works, or how to get things done, you know, that's a small thing. But they, they teach us how to love, what it means to be a family, and what it means to be content with what you have versus clamoring all the time for what you don't have. You know, when, when Hinsey and Jennifer take the money that they've earned babysitting our kids while we have a meeting at church, and the first thought is, Chin Lee doesn't have any money, 
not that the girls have any money, but Chinty Lee has he is worse off than they are as a you know as a eighty something year old woman living in a closet because that's all she can afford amongst these other two families at Pearl Lane. And their first thought isn't oh I can go get something with this. Their first thought, their unreflected thought is there's someone who needs this more and they're off. They know where she is, they're off. They're handing it to this you know, Cambodian refugee who doesn't speak any English, who's bent and smells different, and they don't even think about it. I can't say that. So it's a great place. It's a place that, it's, it's the place of God's choosing for us.